Welcome to Pulaski Heights Methodist Church. Um, we're glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Would you please stand as we sing? In my heart, in my heart, there's a fire burning. A passion deep within my soul. Not slowing down, not growing cold. An unquenchable flame that keeps burning brighter A love that's blazing like the sun For who you are and what you've done And as the fire is raging on So your praise becomes my song the whole earth is filled with your glory, Lord. Angels and men adore. Creation longs for what's in store. May you be honored and glorified, exalted and lifted high. Here at your feet I lay my From the ends of the earth to the heights of heaven Your glory, Lord, is far and wide Through history you reign on high From the depths of the sea to the mountain summit Your power, Lord, it knows no bounds A higher love cannot be found so let the universe proclaim your great power and your great name. The whole earth is filled with your glory, Lord. Angels and men adore. The creation longs for one in the store. May you be honored and glorified, exalted and lifted high. Here at your feet I lay my life. The whole earth is filled with your glory, Lord. Angels and men adore. Creation longs for what's in store. May you be honored and glorified, exalted and lifted high. Here at your feet I live my life. to the Lord our God and King His love endures forever for He is good He is above all things His love endures forever sing praise sing praise with a mighty hand with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm his love endures forever for the life that's been reborn his love endures forever sing praise sing praise sing praise sing praise God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with 
Burns, and I have the joy, just the great joy and blessing of being on staff here at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church, and I work with the children in the children's ministries. So on behalf of the staff and all the members of the church, just say a very warm welcome, of course, to everyone, but especially to those of you who might be visiting with us today. And um, we want you to feel comfortable and at ease and welcomed. And I'll be hanging around after the service if you have any questions about the church or if you've been a member a long time but you've got some questions. I might not have the answers, but I'll know who to ask. So we just want everyone to just feel so welcome and a part of the things happening here at Pulaski Heights. Uh, one announcement I want to talk about, and of course, if you work in children's ministries, this will be my one big announcement. When we think about summer, y'all probably think about lots of things, but don't you also think about Vacation Bible School? How many of y'all attended Vacation Bible School when you were little or young or whatever? I mean, isn't it like one of the best weeks of the whole year? No, let me correct that. It is the best week of the whole year. This year, it will be June, July 10th through the 14th. And you can see every year the curriculum is so fun. It's different every year. This year, it, we're going to be, the whole church will be transformed for the Shake It Up Cafe. Doesn't that sound fun? Because, you know, Jesus shakes up our life, and we're changed and transformed, and then we just go out in ministry to others. So that's what we'll be learning about and talking about all week. You can register online. And listen, y'all, I always want to mention this. This is a great way to reach out. Maybe you have neighbors or friends or nieces or nephews or whoever, and you're thinking, boy, I don't know if they have a church home. This is a great way to bring kids and families into the church. So we, we want a ton of visitors. We want our members. We want a ton of visitors because we will be shaking it up. Now, for any of you grown-ups who are just heart sick that you're not old enough to go to VBS, 
and I'm sorry if you're not, I've got good news for you. We need a lot of volunteers. So you all, isn't that good news? So everybody here can be part of Vacation Bible School. We've got something on Sunday afternoon, during the week. We even need help ahead of time. So I look forward to hearing from those of you that the Spirit is moving in you right now, and you're saying, I want to be part of the Shake It Up Cafe. Thank, thank you for letting me give that plug. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, you are with us forever. Your love endures forever. You are so faithful and so strong. And God, we give you praise. We thank you that we can gather this morning to praise you, to grow closer to you, to just experience you. We pray that during this hour of worship, our hearts are moved, we are stirred by just the amazing love and grace that you have for everyone. In Christ's name, amen. And now I want to invite all the boys and girls to come forward for a little special children's message. So come on down, boys and girls, and join me down here on the front steps. Yeah. You can come a little closer, Rainer, if you want to. I mean, because we might not have quite as many boys and girls, but I'm so excited by the big crowd we have. Hey, everybody, this is great. The first thing I want to tell all of you precious, amazing children is how very, very much this church loves you. We pray for you. We are here for you. We care about you. You are important to us. Everybody say amen. amen. They, y'all are gifts in our lives, and we thank you for that. Now, I want to talk about a church family. You know how you might have your family, or you might have, like, ne sometimes neighbors are like a family? One of the greatest blessings, I think, of being a member of a church is we are a family. We're a church family. And when we're a family, we care for each other. We pray for each other. We love each other. I mean, we're just there for each other, right? So, yeah, yeah. So, tomorrow is Memorial Day. And this is where we honor, and this, has been, this holiday's been going on. I did a little research because I knew I'd be talking to y'all. It's been going on for a long time. And the holiday is to honor those brave, wonderful folks who serve our country and who protect us and keep us safe. So I thought, okay, tomorrow's Memorial Day. We're a church family. What if we talked about this morning doing something for a member of our church who is serving our country overseas? So I know someone. His name is Eric Brinkman. He's a young dad in our church. He has a wife and two little boys. And he was deployed about three, about three to four weeks ago to Afghanistan. He's in the Air Force, and he's going to be there for four months. So I made a little card. It has Mr. Eric's address on it. And I thought that y'all might want to take this home. I want to ask you to pray for Mr. Eric. Because remember, we're a church family, right? And what do we do when we're a family? Pray for each other. Exactly. Thank you. So we'll all pray for them. Pray for Eric and his family. You might want to make a card or send him a card and um, just keep him in your prayers. Now, there might be, you all might know of some other people who are deployed. I would love to get their name and pray for them, and we can send them something special too. So Mr. Eric isn't the only one, but he's just the only one that I knew of this week. I made some phone calls. I tried to figure out about some other people. So I don't want anybody to feel left out, and that goes for all our grown-ups too. So y'all let me know about anyone who is deployed because in children's ministries in Sunday school, School, we'll make something special and send to everybody. Okay? Isn't it awesome to be part of a church family? It rocks, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, now I've got a prayer. We're gonna end up and y'all are gonna get a card, but we're gonna I'm gonna we're gonna do an echo prayer. I'll say it and then y'all say it back, okay? And this is called a soldier's prayer, and it's gonna be on the card that you get. So let us all pray. And grown ups, y'all can echo too. Okay, let us all pray. Put your hands together. Lord, hold our troops, Lord, hold our troops in your loving hands, in your loving hands. Protect them, protect them, 
as they protect us. Bless them and their families for the selfless acts they perform. Selfless acts they perform for us in our time of need. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior. Our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, boys and girls, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give everybody like four cards because there are people sitting around you that I know want a card too. So will you, do y'all mind sharing when you go back to your seats, like with people who are sitting around you? So I'll just give everybody cards and um, we're probably gonna start singing a song while I'm handing these cards out. And um, boy, y'all been an awesome group. I mean we are so blessed. So thank you, boys and girls, for coming down front. Thanks for sharing these cards. Thanks for praying for Mr. Eric. Here you go. Here you go, Nora. Yeah, okay, there you go. Thanks, everybody. And Do we want people to stand to sing, John? Or are we going to let them sit? Here we go. Here we go, Rainer. Oh, thank you. Thanks, everybody. That was a very special time. Sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. My chains are gone. Set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My Chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace.
just listen to that all day long if we could just get down the amazing grace and ending love part and just have it right here all the time thank you that was absolutely beautiful now we come to just a wonderful special time in our service where we will pray together and before we do that I just wanted to ask if there are any prayer requests from any of you all yes oh just said a cousin in Joplin whose home is gone. Thank you so much, Jill, for reminding us. Certainly, our hearts and prayers are with those in Joplin and really just around the world as that just seems to be part of life. And, um, but certainly, they're so close to us. So thank you, Jill. Anyone else have any prayer requests? Cindy, I have a good friend who lost his mother this week. Okay, a good friend who lost his mom. I mean, you know, a church family, we just share in the grief and the, the sadness. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Let's all join together in the spirit of prayer. And what I want to do is I'm going to, um, we're going to pray. And then there are going to be some times I'm going to just say, uh, and now we want to pray for those serving our country. And there will be a little silence. And you can either say out loud or uh, just in your hearts. And we'll pray for the sick. And, and we'll just kind of do it that way. Is that okay? Okay, let us pray. Gracious, loving God. You give us unending love, amazing grace, the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray, God, that as we are hurting, as we are afraid, and we all are, we all are on some level, in some way, at some time in our life, that we will know and claim and cling to your unending love and your amazing grace that sustains us when we are in the midst of crisis, when our home is blown away as Jill's cousin. As a friend who's lost their mother, we pray that in these times, God, these people, but all of us, will know your presence, feel your grace, and that your love will just be in us and permeate every part of us so that we will respond to others in love. We lift up those who are so bravely serving our country. We just want to take a moment of silence. We can speak aloud or in our hearts names of those that we love who are in service this Memorial Day weekend. We ask for special prayers. Hank and Bridget. Eric. God, we bring our prayer to you of people who are sick, who are facing treatments and unknown reports and wondering about a lab report. We, we love people. We all know people in these situations. We pray in our hearts for these people. And God, we pray for all of us because it is only through you, the great healer, that we can be all that we can be. So we pray for those around us, for ourselves, that we all are in need of your love and your grace. So during this time of worship and beyond, may we just be so aware of who you are and share your love with others. And now let us all pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. songs magnificent obsession i love that um let's stand we're going to have a responsive reading for our scripture today which is wow it's just such a wonderful it's the 23rd psalm i i know probably a lot of you are like me that's probably one of the first um scriptures i learned growing up so uh we will read this responsively the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right, right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
As you are being seated, I want to invite the ushers to come forward and please join me in a prayer. Gracious God, just the, the thought of us having a magnificent obsession all about you and a passion is just such a wonderful way to look at that. And when we do have passions, that is what we care about. So help us to just have more and more of a passion for you and through that, help us to be generous, not just with our resources, but with our time, our love, and just help our cups to overflow in response to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I want more of you, living water rain down on me. Lord, I need more of you, living breath of life come and fill me up. We are hungry, we are hungry. We are hungry for more of you. We are thirsty, oh Jesus. We are thirsty for more of you. Lord, I want more of you. Living water rain down on me. Lord, I need more of you. Living breath of life, come and fill me up. We are hungry. We are hungry. We are hungry for more of you. We are thirsty, oh Jesus. We are thirsty for more of you. We are hungry, we are hungry. We are hungry for more of you. We are thirsty, oh Jesus. We are thirsty for more of you. We lift our holy hands up, we want to touch you. We lift our voices higher and higher and higher to you. We lift our holy hands up, we want to touch you. We lift our voices higher and higher and higher to you. We are hungry, we are hungry, we are hungry for more of you. We are thirsty, oh Jesus, we are thirsty for more of you. We are hungry, we are hungry, we are hungry for more of you. We are thirsty, oh Jesus, we are thirsty for more of you. We lift our holy hands up, we want to touch you. We and higher and higher to you we lift our holy hands up we want to touch you we lift our voices 
Happy Memorial Day. It's good to be with you uh, in this celebration of worship. Every now and then, Reverend Bradley tells me it's okay if I come here and preach. And so he, he picked Memorial Day weekend for me to do this thing. But I'm, I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad we're together on this uh, holiday. Will you pray with me? Holy God, may we know your presence. We know you're already here, but wait, may we know your presence in our lives and in our worship. And in this time, together, in Christ's name we pray, amen. What do, you, what do you fear most? What holds you, what is it that holds you in its paralyzing grip and keeps you from becoming all that God wants you to be? Is it, a, is it maybe a, a fear that has been fueled by this uh, culture we live in today. You know, one of those 21st century phobias that, that plague so many people. The you know, fear of flying. The fear of terrorism. That's a, that's a big one. And the fear of natural disasters. Certainly with the uh, rash of killer tornadoes that have swept our nation the past month or so, We've all developed a healthy, healthy respect for the power, the destructive power of nature. What do you fear most? Uh, maybe your fear is, uh, is a bit more personal, like a, a, a fear of, of rejection, or a fear of intimacy, or a fear of making a commitment. Or maybe your fear is the biggie. Maybe it's that, that, that huge fear that, that, that has terrified millions and millions of human beings for centuries and centuries and centuries. centuries. Maybe your fear is thanatophobia. Thanatophobia, the, the fear of death or loss of life. N not only the loss of your own life, but the loss of, of family, friends, and loved ones. So what is it? What do you fear most? And, and here's the other question. Where do you go? Where do you go to find refuge and comfort and restoration for your soul in those moments of fear? Where do you go? Think of a, think of a literal location. I mean, a physical location address, a, a literal place. For me, it's my backyard. I mean, I've only had this backyard for 12 months now, but it is holy ground. It's sacred space for me. It's, it's that place where I can take the coat and tie off and pull on a pair of shorts and t-shirt and simply sit and rest and breathe place of restoration. I, I love everything about it. I, I love the 1950s aggregate concrete patio with the, with the cracks that run throughout it. Love that patio. And, and I love the mature oak trees that surround it. And the smell of honeysuckle, smell of honeysuckle growing along the fence row. I, uh, I love the teeter-totter and the sandbox and the clutter of toys that are there to entice and welcome my three grandsons when they make their frequent visits to, to play in the background. It's, it has a kind of restorative power for me. It's, it, it's sacred. It's, it's holy. Now, I especially love my patio furniture because it, it is a compilation of reclaimed, uh, uh, restored junk. That, that's been in my family for 
years. I mean, the big, comfortable lawn chair that I sink into that, that takes my backside almost to the ground ha has been in my family for somewhere between 50 and 60 years. I mean, I grew up with that chair. We, we grew up together. And, and the, and the glass-top dining table and chairs were once an indoor set that served in the breakfast area for Karen and for me. The, the wicker porch swing was a gift from a friend after I officiated the funeral services for her husband. And even, even the bird feeder, it means a lot to me. It was one of those 75% off going out of sale items that I bought in Northwest Arkansas during the, the economic crash. And so what I've done is I've taken all of these and I've, and I've put a coat of bronze paint on everything to kind of pull it all together to restore it, to, to make it whole. The landscaping in my backyard is a restoration project. This spring alone, I have planted eight azaleas, five crepe myrtles, and a small tree using nothing but an old-fashioned hand shovel and sweat equity in the, the rocky soil of our backyard. Now, my wife, Karen, has offered plenty of support. She, she's been willing to bring me glasses of water and, and to tell me how manly it is, this, this thing that I'm doing. But, but I love the backyard because it is a restoration process. It's a, taking something that's in one place and bringing it along, nurturing it, and, and trying to create something else, something new and healthier. Isn't this what we all yearn for in our lives? Isn't it for, for ourselves? We want refuge. We want comfort. We want restoration. We, we want to find ourselves set free from those things that, that terrify us, that, that hold us and, and keep us from being all that we can be. I love the words of the 23rd Psalm. They express it so well. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. If we were asked to name the one psalm that expresses perfect peace, it would be the psalm, wouldn't it? It would be the 23rd psalm. I mean, the, the poetry is sublime. The imagery is serene. Green pastures, refreshing waters, a table filled with good things to eat, a, a cup overflowing. It's, it's the shepherd's psalm. It's the song of David, the shepherd boy who became king over Israel. And unarguably, the 23rd Psalm is the best loved and most familiar passage in the entire Bible. I mean, even people who are nominally religious or not religious at all know this passage. They, they've heard it at, at multiple funerals and memorial services. And virtually everyone can recite at least a phrase or two from the 23rd Psalm. As a matter of fact, uh, theologian and Old Testament biblical scholar Walter Brueggemann says it's, it's, it's pertinent, to, it's, it's, it's reprehensible to even try to analyze this psalm. It is what it is. It, it pays its own witness. It explains itself. There's, there's no need to say anything. You think about it, it has this incredible calming effect, doesn't it? Whether, uh, whether we're reading it ourselves or we hear someone else recite it, it has this power to slow the heart rate, calm the soul. It's like a tranquilizer. It, it has this effect in, in difficult situations. As a matter of fact, throughout my life, I have used the 23rd Psalm as a kind of personal mantra in, in those moments of 
chaos and confusion and fear. And when I was facing the death of a loved one, or when I find myself in an automobile accident, or when I was struggling and anxious about a, a final in, in college or, or graduate school, or even in those moments when panic set in and I was standing up to speak in public, the, the 23rd Psalm has been there for me, assuring me, renewing, showing the way. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now the 23rd Psalm is a psalm of assurance, a psalm of trust, trust in God. And, and through its beautiful imagery, it, it teaches us how to trust God. It, it's too bad, it's really too bad that this psalm is so often associated with funerals and death and memorial sermon services because in reality this is a psalm about life it's a lot psalm about life with God and how we can live life with God and what this psalm tells us is that life with God doesn't mean that we will not experience valleys and shadows and even death God never promised us a pain free existence. I mean, the world, the world is filled with evil. Nature can be brutal, and so can human beings. Babies still starve to death, and guns kill, and so do F5 tornadoes. And on this Memorial Day weekend, we are reminded that young soldiers, young men and women, often fall in foreign battlefields. Things happen to us that God does not want to happen to us. God does not want to happen. But the good news, the good news in all of this is that God is with us. The 23rd Psalm tells us this. God is with us, walking through that valley, through the shadows, through even those moments of death. God is with us, and because God is with us, and God loves us, and God never abandons us, we can be assured that we can overcome, survive anything, because God is there, even in death. Uh... The Reverend Alvin Johnson, who is an Episcopal priest, writes a beautiful essay, the story of the death of his seven-year-old son, Nicholas, to leukemia. And Alvin Johnson says that throughout most of that horrible ordeal, Nicholas was strong through the diagnosis, the treatment, the celebration of remission, and then the, the return of the disease up to the very end. But he says one night, one night, not too long before his son died, Nicholas expressed fear and terror. He wanted his dad to tell him, what's going to happen to me when I die? And Alvin Johnson said to his son, you have a place in heaven, it's assured. Nicholas wasn't satisfied with this. He said, but, but dad, I won't be able to be with you and mommy and sissy anymore can't you can't you just put my body at the foot of your bed or or bury me in the backyard no nick you can't do that his dad said through his tears he said but mommy and i will be buried on either side of you and we promise we will remember you all of our lives and every year, every year on your birthday, we will celebrate it, including a celebration this year. The father's explanation seemed to satisfy his son, and Nicholas never mentioned his death again. 
Rabbi Harold Kushner, who is perhaps best remembered as the author of uh, When Bad Things Happen to Good People, published in the early 1980s, Harold Kushner says that it's really not thanatophobia, the fear of death, that frightens us. I mean, no one wants to live forever. He says what really frightens us is this sense of time passing, marking off, moving on. It's the fear that we might go, that we might disappear without ever making an impact on the lives of others. I mean, our human nature is to want to, cre cre to create and to restore. We want to do these things in the same way that God the Father created us and God has restored us to new life through the gift of Jesus Christ. We, we want to restore. Um, while my backyard is my Garden of Eden, I have to tell you it's a fallen garden. It, it's a work in progress. And there, there is poison ivy growing through the honeysuckle. And there are blackberry brambles shooting up amongst the irises and after heavy rain it seems that sharp rocks seem to keep surfacing to the top of our backyard and so whenever my my grandsons come over and, and they decide that they want to make that that journey that that trek to the to the back side of the yard to uh, to look for the giant panda that lives in the cane break I insist, I insist on going with them, journeying with them on the way until they're back safe and sound again. This is what God does for us. God makes that journey with us through the valley, through the shadows, through death. God restores our life. Alvin Johnson's seven-year-old son, Nicholas, died on a Tuesday of Holy Week. And Alvin says that that afternoon, that very afternoon, as he and his wife, Vicki, sat in their yard watching the sunset and their two-year-old daughter playing and grieving the loss, grieving the loss of their child, Alvin spoke up and he said to Vicki, what if this is all there is? What if dead is dead is dead? What if life comes to an end? What if Nicholas is no more? There was a long, quiet pause. And then Vicky finally spoke, quiet but steady. She said, you may be right. You may be right. But I choose to live my life believing that God's words are true. And so here, these true words from God. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. This past week, I planted a tree in my backyard to replace the one that was taken out during the recent storms here in the city. God invites us, all of us, to plant something, to go out and to offer refuge and hope, to be restorationist, to restore, to remind the world of the good news that God is with us in life, in death, in life beyond death. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, in our doubts and in our fears and in those dark valleys, 
we can have the assurance that even when we are not present, you are, and you are carrying us and directing us and loving us throughout the journey. We thank you for this kind of love that never ends but continues forever and ever. Amen. Please stand as we sing our closing song.
So go forth on eagle's wings, knowing that through the gift of Jesus Christ, your lives have been restored. Go and restore the lives of others. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen. I hear the voice of many angels.